we got to talk about the stock market, baby, but I want you to just hear something real quick. I heard this one, and it really resonated with me. And it's a man that gets out and works every single day, regardless of how he feels about it, and woman too, will always outwork someone who only does it when they feel like it. And that one sat with me, and that keeps me going. It keeps me grinding on what I need to do. But there's something even more important than just doing it for the grind family, and it's doing it for people that are really impacted and you can help them. And this is one of the things that I got that I just had to share with the family because it really resonated with me. Check, look at this. So, T, I blocked your name out of respect, family. I don't know if you wanted to just have this all over the internet. Said this, I joined the $5,000 challenge and you're glad that you did. Why? Because you had two flood losses in your house, but you had the money for the deductibles because you did the challenge. And you said, no worries now. And now you're in a $10 a day challenge. He said, Keenan, I appreciate your commitment to the community and following your gift. And I just want to say, T, shout out to you. And I appreciate you. And that's one of the main reasons why I do it. Because I know there are so many people who we can help, who we can reach, and who we can help be better than they probably even thought they could be on their own family. That's important to me. So shout out to you for also joining the $10 challenge, which we're going to keep it going. And we're going to keep building into our wealth family. Now, for those of you that didn't know, the 26-week challenge, that was the $5,000 challenge that T was talking about. This is where thousands of people we've helped to get from zero, basically, to $5,000 in just a few months, family. Then, like they said, we're going on to the $10 challenge, and we midway through that, and $10, $10, $10, $10. We're just building our wealth up basically every single day with our accountability group, family. And the next challenge, I'm going to let you just see behind the curtain, this is going to be the passive income challenge. And this is where we're going to start building out a new portfolio where we're going to build it so that we are getting paid for the rest of our lives. During a recession, what do we need, family? We need cash flow. So we look into the passive income challenge. Now, this episode is brought to you by the Moomoo Moo Investing app. Use the link pinned to the top comment. They're going to offer you 10 free dollars, right? Just sign up. You get $10. You deposit some money on there, and then you're going to get up to 15 free stocks. Now, we're going to use Moomoo Moo for what? Oh, yeah, that passive income challenge. We're going to start a new portfolio, and this is going to be our passive income portfolio, family. So if you want to be up on that and a part of that, then download Moomoo Moo so that when we start it after the $10 challenge, you will be ready to go on day one. So the link is pinned to the top comment, and I'll see you over there on Moomoo. Moo. Let's get that done. Let's square that away so then we can start that next challenge and then knock it out the park two family and keep building together. This is what this is all about. While other people are so focused on the drama, they're so focused on, you know, all of these different things in the media, the politics, everything going on with cancel culture and all of the mess, what the Kardashians are up to, keeping up with them, right? Instead of all of that, we got to focus on challenging each other to be better. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to work on building ourselves up, stacking cash. We've been stacking cash this whole recession. Jump, getting our money into the blue chip companies, family. We've been doing that for the recession. And now we're going to work on getting that cash flow going. Again, I can't wait to start. Again, download Momo so you can be a part of that from very day one. Now, what are we going to talk about today, family? We got to talk about a stock that I want to get it all right now. I'm not looking to buy this stock at this level, but I'll tell you when it would become more attractive. And what stock is that? Oh, man, it's one of the hottest stocks on the market right now for all of the wrong reasons. Let's check it out. It's Snapchat. And I was asked, Keenan, would you buy Snapchat stock right now for a long-term hold? You are the CEO of your own portfolio, so you got to be the judge of that. But I'm here to give you the facts so you know what time it is, baby. Check it out. Snapchat is currently $7.68. It's down 28%. Family, to put that into perspective, the stock market is expected to grow basically 10% a year, basically forever. So understand this, and it's been doing that for the last 100 years. However, some years you had it down. For example, the overall stock market is down over 20% this year. But you know what? That's this year. This is in one day that this is down 28%. So it's down 25% in the past week, and it's down 86% in the last year. So Snapchat is getting smoked, family. But like Warren Buffett always says, he says when there's fear, that's when you need to look and say, is there an opportunity here? Now, I do see an opportunity, but it may not be the same one that you're seeing right now. So then I'm going to give you my perspective on it. I see an opportunity to make money on the volatility. 
not to hold it long term yet because Snapchat was profitable and they have since fallen out of that profitability. And in a recession, when the market is coming down on a year, guess what? There's a flight to safety where the institutions, the retail investors, they all try to get into high yield savings accounts. They try to get into bonds. They try to get into safer investments than things that would normally run up during a bull market. So since we know that, we say, okay, the fear is there on Snapchat. It's down 86% on a year. What do we do? How do we make some money here? First of all, let's get to the facts. So look at this. I just told you, and you know, I'm always coming with the receipts. Snapchat used to be profitable. Look at this. They earned 15 cents a share, almost 20 cents a share. Oh, they dropped below this green line here, which is our line of profitability. And now they lost one cent per share. Not crazy, but they're not profitable and it's a recession. So then this is not a good look, but let's keep it going. And remember, I said that I'm looking to potentially make money on the volatility and I get to the price that I'm looking at that I'll be willing to play it as more of a longer hold if it hit this target. But let's keep going first. Now, the P ratio, like I always tell you, it's not even there. Why is it not there? This is the price to earnings ratio, AKA how much do you have to give them for them to bring you a dollar? Well, they're never gonna bring you a dollar if they're not profitable. So you don't see a PE ratio there, right? I hope that that one rung a bell and made some sense to you because I've been trying to drill the fundamentals of companies and have you look at them fundamentally, like how is this company doing? So you can understand it better. I'm always trying to drop a gem on you. This is a $12 billion company at this point in time, but they're not making any money currently, right? They're feeling the heat. They're feeling the pressure. It's too hot in the kitchen for them, man. <laughs> now, this is what's going on too. And excuse me, my allergies is killing me right now. So they said Snapchat basically, Twitter triggered 35 billion route in social media stocks. So what is going on here? Social media stocks across the board have just been flopping like a rock, right? And they're saying that all in all, the group lost 35 billion, but Snapchat was a huge hit as well as a part of it. But check this out. You know how you hear those things where they tell you, oh man, if you invested $10,000 or $1,000 back in the day in the Apple, it would have been this price, right? Benzinga kind of flipped that on his head. If you invested back then, what would it be now? And take a look at this. If you've invested $1,000 in Snapchat a year ago, how much would you have now? I'm gonna take a quick second, right? I want you to go to the comments, take a guess. Don't cheat, don't cheat. If you invested $1,000, just a quick guess off the top of your head, don't do no calculations, how much would you have now? In the comments, I want you to go and tell me what you think. And I'll give you a little, I'm gonna give you a second. Five, four, three, Two, don't cheat. One, if you invested $1,000 in the Snapchat a year ago, here's how much you would have today. $98, just about, because at the low, it got down 90%. So you would have had about $98. Now, if you got that right, family, let me know. But let's keep it going, family, because that's crazy. Usually, like I tell you before, you think to yourself, oh, if you've invested back then, Remember, people who bought in on a high, they might think, oh yeah, I got it at a good time. You're just gonna hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Sometimes you don't want to hold some of these stocks when they run up like this and then the PE ratios get crazy. The valuation of the company, like this company is worth how much and how much money are they bringing in? It's getting crazy. You gotta think to yourself. Like I was thinking about a company that I've been talking about here, there, there, whatever, right? Let's, let's use Snapchat as an example. And we try to get into these kind of things and we trade them. Like I always tell you, right? You can't do the heat of these hot stocks to stay out of the kitchen. Hot stocks run up and then they come back down and we looking to ride the wave, right? But then, you know, where I came up with the phrase, be right back here crying to me and I'm not having that because you got to understand if we try to get in low and then get out high and you can't hit through the heat when we jumping out high, right? You didn't have the plan to swing trade like we did. So you got to understand when it's time to swing trade. Like, for example, these short squeeze kind of plays, all of the retail investors, even institutions, play them for a swing trade, for example, like one of them that's running up right now, Mullen Automotive, right? That's been running, but they run and then they come down. These are mostly swing trades. You get in low, you get out high. However, understand this. There are companies that are bangers, like ETFs, for example, not companies. Well, an exchange traded fund, an ETF the foundation of your portfolio. There are companies like Apple, Microsoft, right? Like these banger companies that, oh yeah, we invest into those. But other companies, we trade. And that's how you handle the heat. One of the ways is you learn the difference between an investment and a trade. And we talked about that time and time again. Snapchat, I'm seeing it as 
a trade. It could graduate into a long-term hold, but as it stands, when it's not profitable, I see it as a trade at this point. That's not the only reason, but here goes a few other reasons. So it says this, Snapchat reports the slowest ever quarterly growth. However, it did add new users. So the slowest ever quarterly growth, hold up, that's not good. Hold up, hold up. No, that's not good, family. That's not good, that's goofy. So what we want to think is, okay, now that we know that their quarterly growth is really, really, really not there, mm, it's looking like a trade. It's looking like a trade. It's as simple as that. So let's get to some of the facts and let's get back to them. So check this out. Banks, I seen this post floating around. Shout out to the family for sending it my way. And they said, look at the difference in the fundamental valuation that Morgan Stanley, large financial institution, gave to Snap. And you might not be able to see it. I hope it's big enough on your end. I'll double check when I'm done with the video. They priced it at $80. That was their target. And then now they updated it and they priced it just, what was this, yesterday at $7. Huh. So they're saying that it used to be worth 80 but now they're saying it's worth seven. This is their price target for it. So what do we do with this information? We know that Snap may have deeper to go in laying off workers and they got a $7 price target. So this tells us that we need to try to catch it low and I consider low to be $4.99. I want you to do your own research, but I consider low to be about $4.99. Now you're saying, okay, they said Keenan, it's worth $7, it's seven sixty eight right now. Could it run up? Of course it could run up, right? It's already oversold. So that means it can turn around and run up. But why wouldn't I buy it right now? Because I know that with us sitting in a recession, which may get deeper as the Fed, the Federal Reserve keeps heightening these interest rates, then that's telling me that if something is worth $7, I want to buy it under what it's worth so then I could ride the wave up to its worth. I don't want to necessarily get in where it's worth and then we're in a recession and then it loses value with me in it, right? So then that's why I'd be looking for it on the lows. So family, I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. If you want to be up on the next challenge, which is going to be the passive income challenge, again, download the Moomoo app. This is where we're going to start a new portfolio and then just use this one so that we could build our long-term passive income income family that's going to be the next challenge right now we're on a ten dollar challenge i want you to get in and be ready to go join the discord the link is pinned to the top comment so i can share everything with you i got your back i love y'all and again like i always say if you can't handle the heat of these hot stocks to stay out of the kitchen baby and consider staying sexy hey i love y'all i'll see you in the next one take care